Welcome back. So we've had two semi-finals here at Coxburgh 2020 finals day for club cricket here at uh, Derby. Bournemouth won the first one when they made 162 for four in their 20 overs with House making 65 not out, opening the innings and batting through. Rygate Priory 147 for seven. They had a late spurt at the end, but they didn't uh, get there quickly enough. They gave away 17 wides, which was probably the main difference between the two teams. And uh, Bournemouth uh, cantered through to victory. So they're in the final. And within the last five minutes or so, Cutney have made their way to the final, having made 180 for four, with Stroh making 95. Opera were dismissed for 114. And uh, apart from a very bright and breezy a 35 from Charlie Alt, they never looked like getting there. And the spin of, uh, of Cutney was absolutely outstanding. Ali at four for 16. And uh, Dan Brown didn't take a wicket, but took uh, four overs naught for 14. They basically strangled the life out of Cockney. Right, let's get down to the middle. It is time for the toss for the final. And Dave Fulton has got the two captains with him. Yeah, thanks, Charles. I've got uh, Will Butler of Cookney and also Craig de Weimann of Bournemouth, who won the first semi-final. Craig has got the coin. He's going to do the honours. The call is ahead. And it is ahead. Will, what are you going to do? We're going to have a bat, mate. Um... We're going to just try and lead off from where we left off before. Um, just try and crack the ball out of the park again like we did before. <laughs> yeah, winning formula. Both teams have won batting first. Does that influence your decision? Um, we've batted first all through the championship. Um, we haven't bowled first once in the whole competition, so we're just going to try and do it all the way through if we can. Well, good luck. Let's bring in Craig. What have you been doing in the, in the meantime while you've been watching? Have you been watching the second semi final? Have you relaxed? Yeah, a few of the boys uh, watched the second semi-final. Some of them went over to the hotel and just had a shower and chilled out. Um, some have been eating a bit of food. Yeah, so a bit of a mixture. Not on the beers just yet? Not yet, not yet. We'll keep them on ice. You won the first final batting first. Any qualms about chasing? No, I think we're happy either way. Um, I think I would have batted as well. But, you know, the wicket hasn't changed all day. And, you know, I'm sure we can make the most of it on the second dig as well. well. Well done. Good luck. Cheers, thanks. Uh, News at the toss is that Cookney have won it and they're going to have a bat. Very good evening to you from Derby, where the lights are on, and this is it, the final of the Coxburgh Club 2020, and it is Bournemouth against Cutney. They've both fought their way through all sorts of matches throughout the summer. They've won their semi-finals in style, and now these two very fine club cricket sides are going to go head-to-head. -head. Bournemouth, the youngest side in the competition, uh, only uh, average age of 20, and with one county player in their ranks. And that is uh, the young uh, left-arm seamer of Gloucestershire, David Payne. Cutney, uh, a side of no real stars as such. They haven't got anybody on any county staffs or anything like that, but they've got some mighty fine cricketers. Just talking about a batsman and a bowler from each side who performed in the semis. For Bournemouth, uh, Mark House at the top opened the batting, 65 not out. And then the off-spin of Simon Watkins strangled Rygate and Priory. He took two for 12 off his four overs. For Cutney, no doubt about the batting star for them. Richard Stroh, 95 before he was out of the very last ball, going for glory and 100. And the best bowler that they had as far as stats were concerned, Tom Elliott, four overs, four for 16. But all sorts of talent and all sorts of people who this afternoon and this evening have been living and will be living their dream. And there is Richard Stroh, the uh, KP lookalike. He bats a bit like him as well. He certainly has got a lot of talent. Let's get to the commentary box now, and there we will join Jeremy Coney and Dave Full. Thanks, Charles. 541 clubs took part originally in this Coxburg Club 2020. We're down to the last two. And in the context of this finals day, two of the underdogs, Rygate Priory and Otbrook, were much fancied. Both came unstuck. David Payne is going to kick things off. Left arm, fast medium, plays for Gloucestershire. Had a hand in the Pro 40 victory over Nottinghamshire when they were bowled out for 57 knots. And he might enjoy these conditions under lights, maybe a bit of dew, a bit of moisture. 
Still a little bit in this pitch. That is very close. Richard Stroh, 95 in the first game, and this is a beautiful delivery from David Payne. Swinging back in. Hugh Evans didn't want to know, but look close to me, Jeremy. Yeah, playing the initial line of the ball as it comes out from David Payne's hand with the pad, and therefore you can't get at it so well with the bat. That looks very close. Hugh Evans, the umpire. That's going to run away. I think it was off the pad. Although, no, little inside edge onto it. So Hugh Evans helping out Richard Stroh. The very close LBW first up. And was there a little tickle in this one? Just gets a little bit more leg side. I think it's more pad, to be honest, than inside edge. It doesn't uh, run away. Well, it runs away quick enough because it's so fine. Just lost his line, second one, a bit leg side-ish. Down the pitch, advancing a man full of confidence after his 95, but he'll settle for the single. Good early signs. Bournemouth are very sharp in the field. Denham again straight over the top of the bales. It was a real feature of their semi-final performance. It was, as you mentioned, it's been so far a triumph for, uh, for youth, really, and the vitality of youth rather than the maturity of the geriatric and the more experienced players. And they've, uh, they've shown great enthusiasm. Oh, swing oh, again there for Payne. Uliot made 16 off 13 deliveries. He was the aggressor in this opening partnership. Took the pressure off Stroh. Stroh was a bit more circumspect, played himself in. Uliot the dasher, and then when he got out, Stroh started to get into his stride as the captain. Will Butler, decent all-rounder, hails from South Africa. Wait no, no, no. Really important overs these uh, in both innings, I think, for this match because it has been the top men that have done the damage, or have at least laid a foundation for the imposing totals. Both sides here in the final set their opposition. Obviously, Stroh's already been mentioned with his 90-odd. And uh, also, for Bournemouth, Park and House. One getting 60 and one getting 40. Yes, yes, yes. Not a single hit. Looked like that was off the glove. Go, a bounce from Payne. 76.6 miles an hour. Not too lively, but knows what he's doing with the ball. Six off the first over. see too many of the cookie batsmen. Butler we did. Tom Ulliot, O'Neill, Burgess, Hunt, Brown, Hind, Rose and Bostock. We don't know too much about the batting down the bottom end as they didn't really get to the crease. Just the top five troubled the scorers, mainly thanks to Richard Stroh. He batted but all but one. Well, he batted every delivery, didn't he? Got out off the last ball. He was out there for every delivery. Ed Denham it was impressive in the first semi final. Just bowled a little straighter, I think, than the opposition bowlers uh, who have been dispatched. Now, this man was one of them. Just a little bustling medium pacer, but there's enough in the surface and there's enough uh, with the pink ball early on to keep the batsman watchful. It's gone up and over, and it's safe, and it's going to run away for four. That's a good shot from Will Uliot. Off and running again, Cookney. He's going outside. Well, nothing too much watchful about this. I suppose there is, actually, because he's gone for length, and even though he's fetched it slightly to the leg side of the bottom hand, doing quite a bit of the work, it's been the length, I think, that encouraged him into it. Not a tall man is Denham, so it tends to skid at you a little bit more rather than getting steepling bounce. Down the leg side, and that'll probably be a wide. Yes, indeed. Mike just to brush the pad, but the umpire agrees. Julio feels he's rather missed out. 
lights might be a factor. I wouldn't have thought these players would have played under lights too often. Not too many with county experience. But a cracking atmosphere. A great opportunity for these young men to show their, showcase their skills. It's another big blow to the leg side for Mouliot. It's a favoured area. They might want to think about a field change here, Bournemouth. It's his second boundary. Well, the two men allowed outside the circle are actually hovering in the in the offside. One at third man and one at uh, deep cover. And that may be encouraging Ulliot to go leg side where there's no such cover at all for Bournemouth. Just seems to me the way he sets himself up and the, the use of his strokes that it's going to be the leg side. He's gone again. And that's what I mean about the field change. If he's going to bowl straight, no point having those deep men on the cover boundary and third man boundary. A slight tactical error. Greg De Vrij, man, the captain, might just contemplate a field change. But good striking for Mouliot. He's still got to put him away. Yeah, just too straight with the sort of field that's been set for the for him by the captain. I always think that the bowlers should have a lot to to say about setting their fields as well. It's a it's a collaborative effort. Now the change takes place. It's cost Bournemouth, uh, well, 12 runs in this over. This has gone straight up, and he did this in the first game. He's got away with it. It's what's known as a great choice of club. Just a little lob wedge. Just put it back over the bowler's head. Now, he did this in the first game, Julio. Maybe this is where he's going to ride his luck. Hit fours in the, fir in the second semi-final and then hold out. It's lucky this time. You're hitting very high on the bat, on the shoulder, and a triumvirate of fieldsmen. Converge, but can't get there. Couldn't have placed that any better. He's a lucky man. Show getting struck on the pad again. They'll scamper through for a leg bite. 21 without loss. Twenty-one without loss after two. Cookney, who won the second semi-final here on Club 2020 Finals Day, the Coxburg Cup. We saw this pattern in the in their previous match, Cookney, didn't we? Uliot, fourteen from eight. Stroh, five from five. More watchful, will play himself in. Will look to bat for a long period of time. Good crowd in, young crowd as well. And healthy atmosphere. Club cricket showcased at its very best today. That's better pain. That's two in the right place. You just got to get. The next one there and then the following one as well. I'd even like him almost to get a little bit fuller. He's got the one slip in. I think they could well do with a slip at the, the other end as well to Denham. Just get it to try and swing. It's a misfield. And that's uncharacteristic. Yes, very hot in the field, Bournemouth. No, and a mix-up. And they say no. There they go. We'll settle for the two. Richard stroking to keep the strike. Just a little bit dewy, a bit greasier underfoot. Yeah, well, we were here for the four-day match, weren't we? Just recently with uh, Derbyshire and Essex, and certainly arriving in the mornings, it was very heavy dew. I wouldn't be surprised to see it become just a little factor later on. It's a good single. Batsman advancing down the wicket. That always makes it easier to get to the non-strikers end. And a good understanding, Uliot calling him through, running to the danger end. Very keen to get back on strike. Now then, 
Hilliot as he surveys the scene in front of him. He's got a third man as one of the men out, and the other one is at fine leg. So anything down the ground will do. It's good length from Payne. The underneath the back. Not a bad line either to Hilliot, as much as you want to be straight. Generally, when you bowl a Yorker with a man looking to go leg side, that Yorker can be further outside off stump, showing his county experience. Only a young man, hasn't played much, but played at a decent level, David. Payne. Gone high here. It's going to be one hell of a catch this if he gets it under the lights. And to be fair, a non attempt. The pitching wedge, and up it went. And Pete Smith never really got a good side of it, did he? No, he took off on the wrong line of attack to try and get the catch, and then realised he was actually on the wrong roadway and had to quickly, quickly pull across to the left to try and give himself a chance. But you look at him, he sets off, that, that catch is actually on, but he's had the last moment he's had to turn left. He'll be disappointed. Sharp single from stroke, he gets there comfortably. Yeah, Bournemouth actually won their regional final last year under lights, but they wouldn't play too often under the floodlights with this kind of sky, a really tough sky. If you just get the angle of the lights wrong or you don't quite pick it up early enough, the pink ball was pretty good. It stands out quite well against the sky, but not easy, not something they're used to. Yeah! Out, that's a great catch. Simon Ridley, we saw him take a catch earlier and give it the Andrew Flintoff pose, and he's plucked another one out. Tall man, long arms, and he needed every inch here. And Uliot goes. Uliot again using that bottom hand to drag it from outside off. This time he doesn't get the loft or find the gap. Always danger when you're hitting it through sort of a body person height. You run the risk of getting caught. He shakes his head. He's got the side away to a start. He's got 16. It's 27 for one. There he is, Simon Ridley. Joys himself out there. It's a big occasion for these club cricketers on both sides. The kind of Andrew Flintoff arms outstretched. Took a catch like that in the first semi final. In comes Will Butler. Join. His compatriot Richard Stro. Good partnership in the second semi final, these two. Oh. That's got to be a wide, surely. Ian Johnson in no hurry to signal. How wide it was. Yeah, he just dragged it, didn't he, Uliot? You can see the line of the ball is always outside off stump, and to fetch it across, you want to get the loft if you're going to play a stroke like that. You run the risk also of sometimes dragging it on. Ridley again. Scamper through for a single. And now with the Uliot dismissed, it's back to plan A for Bournemouth. They've got the two men outside off stump, and that's resulted in the wide so far from Denham. Here's uh, the wicket again from the bowler's angle. Ridley always pretty comfortable, I felt, moving to his right. Slight sense of overbalancing, but two hands to it. Stro won't panic here. It's the advantage of having got 95 in the first match, is that you know you're in good touch, you know you can accelerate. Saw what he was capable of later in his innings. But he was watchful to start with, so aware that that might be the way forwards here. Play himself in again, showing some experience. He's 28 years of age. Yeah, likes to play in the V, doesn't he, early on to, to get himself underway. Tends to like to walk at the bowler as well, just a smidge so that he tries to manipulate the lengths of the bowler so he doesn't ever feel happy. See, just there, he sits himself up, walks across to about off stump, and then comes at the bowler a bit. 
holds the stroke. Oh, he's put him down. It's a sharp chance to the keeper. It was where first slip would have been, but he got a bit of a glove on it. Chris Ridley, we've just seen his brother take a catch. And it was Chris Ridley this time who had the chance. 32 for one after four. Just going at a slightly wide one. And Ridley, Chris, full stretched. I don't think he could have uh, got too much further. Maybe a little bit more power to the left leg to drive himself across towards that catch. Just a, sh just a shade more. A butler away at Lucky. And well, that's Lucky as well. And maybe it is Richard Stroh's day. This outfield has slowed up with a bit of moisture on the grass. Just going to be the single. David Payne on the money again. Yeah, it was a tough chance, wasn't it, to Chris Ridley? When you look at it, it went quickly. And this was a bit fortunate as well. Oh. Bold in! A beauty from Payne. Swung back in and knocked back the off stump. And quickly lose their second wicket. Well, movement deserves the wicket. Just created the little gap between bat and pad of Butler. There she goes. And that's a really good delivery. No wonder he's excited about that delivery because uh, that's hit the top of off. And William Butler now has to depart for three and. Uh, Cookney, well, 33 for two. That could be a different game under these lights. Richard Stroh just indicating there to Tom Ulliot. The ball is swinging back in. That was a beauty. Classic left armers dismissal. Pace, but it just it started a swing in and then came in more sharply off the seam, and that's what defeated Will Butler. Missed it by a country mile, didn't he? Good bit of bowling. Wait. Not very watchful. They'll be aware if they did their homework, they would know what this guy's capable of. Place for Gloucestershire. Helped bowl Nottinghamshire out in the Pro 40 for 57. So he's the one with the pedigree, and he's maybe the one they're going to have to look to see off. If you do get the seam position right, when it starts to swing, it'll keep on going. As if it had seamed. See a captain's off stump knock back like that. He's obviously a decent player, Will Butler. Just the guys coming in are going to be a touch more watchful, aren't they? Not going to take any liberties with the likes of David Payne. It is a case of just getting through him. Oh. Be runs here. And just the single. Now quick between the wickets. 34 for two. Putney 34 for two as they look to set a target. Will be competitive under lights here. The final of the Coxspur Club 2020. Lots of passionate support for these two teams. Lots of friends and family. David Payne and Ed Denham, the two opening bowlers. And they've set some pretty good standards here. Denham got a little bit straight early and got clipped a couple of times, but since then, they've been asking questions of these batsmen. 
It's uppish. And a chance. Simon Ridley at mid on again. He's in the game all the time here. Just since the pressure is on uh, Cookley a bit here, they look as to me as if they want to really take advantage of these power play overs. It's a pull shot from Richard Stroh. This one is out the meat of the bat, and he's going to get four for it. Just uh, gets again, just drags it down a little enough to get Stroh, who likes to walk at the bowlers, to halt his progress. And again, just outside off stump is able to fetch it round. Down the wicket, and that's a quality stroke. And there were comparisons to Kevin Peterson in the semi final, and that was Peterson like down the wicket, flick of the wrists, and through mid wicket for four. under pressure here Bold, uh, into his third over and already he's nearly gone for 30 runs gets himself into a position of off stump and then the ball anything straight of course as long as he doesn't miss it it opens up the leg side yeah I think Craig of Omar might just want to think about this leg side field. The two men are back at third man, top left of your picture. If you look on the right hand side, there's no one down there. And the angle of Denham. You see from that last shot, got away with it because mid wicket intercepted it. But if he'd missed it, there's no one back covering that side of the field. The first uh, six overs of the power play. That was Stroh underway in the first over. And uh, his partner, Elliot, hitting hard into the leg side because of the field placements. No one on that leg side until he tried to go once too often. Didn't get hold of it enough and was caught mid on. And then Payne hit the off stump hard. And then Denham under pressure in his last over. 44 for two. Goodish run rate at this stage. Richard Stroh very much to the fore again. Got away with a very, very close LBW first up. He's had a little inside edge pass, leg stump. Sometimes you just get a feeling when it's someone's day. Bit of a waist swing there. New batsman, new bowler, sorry. Simon Ridley into the attack. I wonder if Denham was worth one more over. I know they've broken him into three and three at this stage, or they might be three, one, two. But Elliot has only just come in. He's only faced a lot of eight deliveries. And the way Denham was bowling and just starting to get it to swing a little. So pain for me was worth another over. Yeah, I agree, especially with club cricket. You tend to find all the talent stacked at the top of the batting order. And if you could get one of these two out, particularly Stroh, who was having problems with the left arm swing. Couldn't agree more, Jeremy. Good change of pace. This is what 2020 has done. Not just at international and county level, but probably at club level as well. Just sharpens the skills. It's a very intense form of the game where you've got to be on the money with the ball the whole time. Got to hit your Yorkers, got to mix your pace up. That last one, 54.5 miles an hour from Simon Ridley. It was out the back of the hand. Very accurate. Oh, my goodness me. Could have got hold of that. Would have been run out. It was the captain, Craig De Vrijman, and there was one hell of a mix up. But he couldn't gather the ball. No, if he could only have gathered that, Stroh was gone. He had uh, decided to go for the run, called through. And he just had to gather this all over then. 
That's a better single. Was it from the other pitch? The other pitch beside it, adjacent pitch. It's getting a nasty little bounce, perhaps. Not that championship pitch. No, I don't think so. I just think he might have got a bit excited. The stumps were at his mercy. The batsman was at his mercy. And if he'd have picked it up, he would have walked in and run him out. It's a big, thick edge. It's going to be one down, bounce down to third man, just the single. 48 for two. 48 for two. Terrific atmosphere here for the Coxburg Club 2020. The change in the commentary box, Ian Harvey is with Charles Colville. Thank you, David. Well, here we go with spin for the first time in this final. Simon Watkins, who bowled very well in the semi against Rygate Priory. Took two for 12 from four with his uh, slow off spin. Chopped away, should be just one, and they're going to settle for one. What do we think of the pink ball at night? And uh, it's one of the reasons why they're playing with this pink ball, to see whether it works as a substitute for the white ball. Do you like it, Ian? Well, at the moment, it's quite easy to see, isn't it? Look at the colour of that. You're going to really lose that, are you, under these lights? As you said, it's still quite early in the game. Get up! Bowling again yeah, from Watkins. Good work in the his first semi final. This captain needs a big, big spell from him here. Top edge going to uh, fly out to deep square leg. They're going to come back for two, which they will make uh, quite oh. comfortably. Mark has the fielder. He bowled uh, a little bit in the semi, but his main claim to fame in the semi final was a very fine. 65 not out, which anchored the innings, got them up to a, a very reasonable total, a winning total as it happens. Good fielding again, that's James Park out there in the country at deep mid wicket. No, excellent fielding out there, hit quite hard, swept away. Did quite well on the half volley. It's kept him to the single. The dad, one. sweeps again. They'll get one more, so he will go up now to 24. Now in the uh, first semi-final, Stroh was the uh, the main man as far as Cutney was concerned with the bat. He made a quite brilliant 95. Lots of lusty blows. His uh, big hitting over mid-wicket off uh, the spinner was most impressive. He even played the Dilshan. He had the lot, we had a reverse sweep as well. It's another big six away and he loved it. When asked whether he modelled himself on KP, he said, I modelled myself on myself. It was a very KP answer. Maybe Kevin seen Richard play and maybe modelled himself on him. Yeah, I hadn't considered that, but I think that's unlikely knowing Kevin. So Cutney 180 for four, a not Brook. Didn't get close, 114 all out with uh, Tom Elliott, who is out there batting now and facing four for 16. Oh, no, no. Well, there probably was a second there, but they're not risking it. I think one of the factors might well be for both sides, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm, because it's gone dark as quickly as it has in this, this, this uh, Innings have started as late as it has. They're both going to be fielding under light. So I just wondered whether that would be a disadvantage to the side fielding second, having to cope with uh, life under the lights, because it can be uh, just something that takes a little getting used to, can't it? Well, it can do, as this one's been worked to out behind square, coming back for an easy two. And it is, yeah, and I, I suppose the side bowling second as well has got to contend with. You heard Jeremy Coney say earlier, during the four-day game here, early in the morning, it was quite dewy. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that may play a factor a little bit later in this second half of this innings. We'll just have to wait and see on that. Oh. 
Now there's trouble here. Direct oh. hit and he would have gone. I tell you, Stroh's had his luck in life today and tonight. He could easily have been out LBW first ball, probably should have been. There have been a couple of uh, moments when he's been in trouble. This was uh, Elliot having to uh, scamper back. Stroh very nearly did his mate there like an absolute kipper. Yeah, this time it's an easy single. A struggle between the wickets, these two. There's been a couple of close calls. It was a little bit better, that one. Easy single there. Had to cover point. He might be feeling it a bit here at the moment. Richard Stroh added all of the first innings, the first semi-final. Magnificent 95, and he's still going here. He might be having, feeling the effects of a long inning. <laughs> He's not going to call for a runner because of cramp. We all know that that doesn't work with South Africans. 59 for two off nine. Yeah, that would be a talking point, wouldn't it? If the Bournemouth boys did end up giving him a runner. Heard the news from the Champions Trophy today from yeah. South Africa. No, I haven't. Australia won again. No, they haven't. Uh, they've not lost. Rain. Match abandoned one point each. So that makes uh, that group, Group A, very interesting. And the last day of qualifying. High in the air, is this out? What a good... Oh, he's dropped it. I thought he had caught it. And it's David Payne, the pro, the young pro from Gloucestershire, who's made a mess of that. Yeah, once again, it's been mentioned building under lights I'm not even too sure if young David Payne has done too much under lights down there at Gloucester he made a mess of that one here we go again pink ball showing up great against the night sky but uh, not well enough for Payne to collect it comfortably down she went Yeah, I was saying, Group A on Wednesday, and we've got a, a double-header day on Wednesday, and the Champions Trophy is now well, absolutely a knife-edge for everybody well, involved. Only the West Indies are out of it. Pakistan are through, but Australia or India, who will it be? <laughs> Australia play Pakistan and will need to beat them to be absolutely sure of making it through. And India play the West Indies if Australia slip up, then uh, India can go through themselves. Good so on. all sorts to play for on Wednesday in the Champions Trophy. England, of course, playing tomorrow against New Zealand. They're already through. Ten overs gone, 64 for two. Simon Ridley starting his third over. Oh, good stop. You may not think it's a good stop because his foot's just been removed from his leg, but he's saved up, uh, well, certainly one run, if not four. No, good save. The old the extra fielder, guys, 13 boot, getting in the way of that. Stroh's hit that very well. Might well have saved four runs there for his team. He might also not be able to bowl anymore because uh, he's struggling a little bit here to just try and get a bit of movement back into his leg. He's gone down as though a sniper's pinned him, taken him out. Is that nearly a court and bowl? Going to have to go down as a chance. I'm just, can we have a look at that again? Does it get to him on the floor when he puts his foot out? Here we go. In the air, is that? Then that's, what? Well, easy drop. What's going on? Come off his boot, onto his hand, drop catch. Yeah. Standards, eh? Club cricket today. You know, I love that to have been taken. All the flack I get from the likes of Hussain and Atherton and that lot about, you know, club cricket. What do you know about it? And I love that to have been taken. 
these are the sort of catches which club cricketers hold every day of the week, I'd have been able to say. Tried to use his hand on this occasion, giving away hey, one. Here, and Nash is sitting home in his lounge room at the moment watching this. No doubt about it. Of course, he's always, mind you, no Essex sides in Bob. He's a bit one eyed, so he may not be tuned in. Chingford had made it, or Romford, South End, he'd have been with us, but I'm not sure he will. He can be a bit one eyed, Nash, like that. No Essex involvement or England involvement. Good stop. The excellent fielding there. He's lost his line there. A lot of bottom hand coming into this. You get down the leg side. And an excellent bit of work here. Fine leg by Denham. Saved a certain boundary there and saved his side three runs. Oh! Now, is that going to be called a wide? It is, and that's very, very... Very, very tight, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's a little bit unlucky here on this occasion. The batsman stroke coming down the wicket. Over to the off stump. I think that's terribly unlucky. Big shot straight down the ground. Throws up to 40, 95 in the first uh, semi-final that he played in the semi-final. That's taken him to 36. Yeah, good shot this. We heard a bit of a clunk of the bales coming off, the bowler's hand hitting the bales in his delivery stride. That was his foot, actually. Strode coming down the wicket. That's a fantastic shot, straight over the bowler's head. in the air noble attempt but it's got away for four two fours in a row 11 from that over from Ridley and after 11 overs it's 75 for two down on one knee swept away from Richard Stroh this wasn't quite good enough in the field maybe just skipped on a bit getting a bit dewy out there at the moment but he now does move on to 40, Richard Stroh, of just 32 deliveries, five boundaries. Watkins 11, two oh. overs, here he goes again. Should have had a wicket. <laughs> Tom Elliott was dropped at uh, deep long on. Big sweep again here, boys, big sweep here. Watch the big sweep. Yeah, big shout here. A long way outside off stump. Easy decision for the umpire, that one. Get on! Come on, come on. Nice little moment just before that ball was bowled. The keeper, just like keepers the world over, can't resist telling a batsman they've only got one shot. Stroves gets his sweep out. Bournemouth keeper, Chris Ridley. Full of suggestions. I'm not sure if he was watching that last semi-final. I think Richard Strode had just a couple more shots than that sweep shot. Get on! I'm going to have to look up and see what Chris Ridley does for a living, because I think he could be a barrow boy, the way he's calling out at the moment, selling spuds to 10 pence a pound. He's a student at Southampton University, probably studying marketing. Change of bowling. Ridley is uh, coming off, and here comes Mark House. So 
Simon Ridley, three overs for 20. Here's Mark House with his uh, bustling little medium paces. Now, if that's a stumping, that's brilliant, but uh, no interest from the square leg umpire. The only interest from Hugh Evans, who calls it wide for a leg side delivery. But what a good take that was. Fantastic piece of work. A good start here for House. Two dot balls. Fantastic work from Ridley. Down leg side, unsighted. Stro never moved his back foot. Another very good take as well. There he's off again, just winding up Richard Strode. Helmet, no gum shield. Good little keeper, this boy. Now, that's got to be worth a shout, hasn't it? Hugh Evans isn't interested in that one either. No bat involved. Whew, that must have been close. The naked eye, I think it may have been sliding down a little bit of swing in, swing there. Yeah, quite close. Are you giving that not out? You're giving that one not out, you're giving the other one. No, I'm, I'm probably going to give that out. You'd been bowling, Harvey. There would have been a massive tantrum at you not getting that one. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd definitely spit the dummy if that was given not out. Quite a good little over this by Mark House, his first. Wide, a leg by a single, one ball to go. Stroh on strike. Well, why is that not out? There's that little in-swinger that he tends to bowl. He just gets you to drift in, doesn't he? 13 overs gone, 83 for two. Stroh's on 43 and retains the strike. Yeah, it's been a good start here. We did see Stroh in the first innings take his time early. And then he started to get going towards the end. There's that good start from Will Elliott. He got him off to a bit of a flyer, and then he got out. And then Stroh sort of took an taken over. Darwin! Watkins starting his final over here. Simon Watkins, naught for 16 so far with five balls to go. Now, high in the air again, another chance out there in the deep. This will be a very good catch if it's taken, and it isn't, and I think it's palmed over for six. James Park, the man out there, I don't think this was ever realistically going to be held. I would think by the time he got hands to it, it was probably almost over the line. Yeah, I don't think it would have mattered if, if he had held on to this one. I think it was a great effort in the deep. I think anyway, even if he had held on to it, I think it would have been over the line and over the ropes. Sweep again, and this time he picks the gap absolutely perfectly. It's four more. So here comes the Cutney charge. They know they're in the last seven overs. It's time to put the foot down. Stroh at the other end, 44 from 40. Now Tom Elliott, 25 from 27, chipping in. Yeah, it was about this time in the previous semi final where they started to put the foot down. Eight wickets remaining in the shed. So they've got a good foundation to give themselves another big target. Two balls left. Delicately played. Loud calls of no from Richard Stroke. One ball remaining in his 14th over. Partnership of 62 off just 57 deliveries. Dot to finish. 14 overs gone, it's 95 for two. Well, that was 
not out because the point of contact was outside the off stump. Watkins has bowled out though. Four overs, no maidens, naught for 27. Four more. I get the impression that these two batsmen have decided, especially against House with these little gentle in swingers, that the, the pick up shot, the sweep, the slog to leg side is very much the way to go. Yeah, you can see that that's picked up from outside off stump. So he might need to think of a bit of a field change here, maybe dropping fine leg back. Get on, get on. Once again, swept away behind square. Yeah, maybe bringing fine leg and putting him back and maybe bringing someone up on the offside and making him try to hit those little in-swingers sw in through the offside. Oh, the bowler's got to try something a bit different. Stop bowling the gentle in-swinger. Hundred is up with that single. Get the impression Stroh is really now ready to tee off here. 45 from 42. You may feel, though, with Elliot going nicely, 31 from 39, he can just continue to just play second fiddle and aim to be there at the end for those last two or three overs. But while fours like that are coming to Elliot, he's now up to 35 from 32 deliveries. Stro needs to do nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. I think they may have worked out that Stro is just going to bat at the moment, just give as much strike as he can to Elliot. He's going, dealing in boundaries at the moment. Maybe if Elliot gets out, then Stroh may take over. Get on! Get on! Much needed dot. This has been another expensive over. Ten from it, two fours, two singles. Another single to finish the over. 15 gone, it's 106 for two. That's all it takes, isn't it? Just a runner ball, the odd boundary here and there, and you're up around the 10 runs and over. But if they keep going at their current rate, which uh, over the innings is just over seven, they're gonna to get to 141. And that'll be the lowest score of the first innings of the day so far. I think they'll have uh, sights on something a bit more than that, probably just over 150 if they could possibly do it. Maybe uh, 160 if everything goes absolutely their way. Peter Smith is into the attack. Yeah, it's not easy. Eight, you would think with eight wickets in the shed, they'd be looking at around 10 runs and over. Maybe even possibly 12, as you mentioned, Charles, 160. But we always know that the wicket always does slow the run rate down. Pick up one, you're a chance to pick up a couple. So these two are going to have to probably do the majority of the work. Good start by Smith. Elliot trying to get down the wicket and uh, play a big shot. Ends up just digging out a Yorker. Stroh's the key here, isn't it? He's the wicket they desperately want. Let me get back and they'll have a look at the replays later on and wonder why on earth they didn't have him out first ball to that uh, a big LBW shout to David Payne pulled away for four he really is very good if you drop short on him and the thing about him is he's such a tall and imposing character he's just I mean I know we've kept going on about it how like Kevin Peterson he is but he shuffles down the pitch. Bowlers get thinking, well, I'm not going to let him do that and try and whack it in short to surprise him. And then he just rocks on his back foot, belts it for four. It's Peterson-like. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think Bournemouth need to do something about this. He's scored a lot of his runs in that deep mid-wicket area in the first semi-final that he played. Well, that's gone down away for, I think it'll be four wides, despairing dive by the keeper. So that means we've had nine of two balls of this over. Not a great start to the over from Smith. Not what his captain will have wanted. He's here to do a job and try and keep it to as many singles as possible. Try and get in the odd dot ball. Try and keep the boundaries to a minimum. A 
I'll tell you something that occurs to me, and, and I know these are club cricketers trying their best, but the one ball uh, that is at a 50 for Stroh, the second 50 of the, uh, of the tournament today. Got 95 in the first innings, and he's uh, through to 50 there. Four more, Elliot up to 40. They haven't bowled many Yorkers, that's what I was going to say to you, Ian. You know, I think of you in your pomp, and I know you, you're an international class bowler, but they haven't gone for the dead-eyed Yorker. Yeah, that's probably been the noticeable thing today. We've seen some fantastic players on show, and that's probably one of the things that they haven't nailed today is their death bowling, getting it right up in the block hole. And that may come down to, as well, this this pink ball with swinging. It's not as easy when the ball is swinging both ways. Hauled away, that's going to be four more. This is now becoming a very impressive performance by Cutney for the second time running. 19 from the over, 125 for two, and we still have a ball to go. Yeah, fantastic shot again. And once again, exactly what we're talking about, a length delivery, and it's allowing the batsman to get underneath it. It's maybe one thing that the, the club cricketers here who are on show maybe could work on over the winter months is practising the Yorkers and getting it up as full as they can and being consistent with it. Thomas Ali at 44 off 37. Single will take him to 45. 126 for two, 16 overs gone. Here is uh, Stroh, 50, he got away with life. First ball, he could easily have been given out LBW. But after that, he's been imperious, just as he was in the first innings. He's hit the ball to all parts, some real shots of authority. Certainly favours that sweep and that pick-up. So strong through mid-wicket, you drop a tall short. He'll belt the living daylights out of it. 126 for two, there are four overs to go. And you have to say that you're in a position to really launch a major offensive here. We'll have a change in the commentary box as these last four overs are about to start. John Morris is with David Fulton. Ed Denham back into the attack. Thanks, Charles. Down the wicket, and that's a super straight shot again. One bounce for Tom Ullion on fire here. He is on fire. You're not wrong, David. It's a super shot. Straight down the ground, full face of the bat. Hands right through it. One bounce four. It's another good total being built here. As part of the innings, last four overs, you want to keep it as tight as you possibly can. Don't leak too many boundaries. We've played well again here, Cookney. Good stroke, 50 not out. Tom Williot, well, he's on 49. Make that 53. Give him some credit there, I think he's opened the face. It was a bit off the outside edge, but he knew what he was doing. Warmly applauded by his teammates. Having a terrific knock here, 53 from 40 balls. Well played, young man. Yeah, a really classy shot here for me. And right, he's just opened the face at the last minute, used the pace of the ball, angled it down to third man, four runs. Terrific shot. And he's, he's given him. It's pretty straight. It's a long way down the wicket, mind, but he's hit him in line. I had to make the decision, is the ball going straight on? He's not happy, though. He's given him out. I don't know, can they get a yellow card in this competition? 53 for 41. 134 for three. Yeah, interesting one, because it did look, when, you first, when it first hit him, you thought he was banging in front of all three, but you have to take into the account the fact that he must be so far down the wicket with that chasse. He was coming 
coming down the wicket with lots of aggressive intent. Well, he did come down the wicket, there's no doubt about it. The umpire had to make that call, though. Was the ball straight enough to give him out, even though he was a long way down? Well, he decided it was out. And unfortunately, he had to go, but that brings in Fran O'Neill. And he looks like he can get it a long way as well. He's off the mark straight away, down to third man for a single. We'll bring Richard Stroh on strike. He's 50 from 44 balls. Not a happy man, Tom Uliot. Let's have a look just how far down the wicket he was. You can kind of see his point, although it was pretty straight, and that's the view the umpire gets. It's up in the air. This could be trouble for Stroh. Watkins. Oh, what a catch! And a feature of their efforts so far, Bournemouth. Some terrific fielding. And that's another splendid catch. This time from Watkins. And the main man goes. Well, it's certainly another great catch. We've seen some fantastic fielding here today. All the teams that have been playing, we've seen some great stuff. And none better than this as well. It's gone high. The pink ball in the dark sky. And he just gets his hands underneath to it on the run. Super catch, young man. Richard Stroh goals for 50. Another fine 50 from that young man off just 45 balls. Well, exactly what Bournemouth needed. Two wickets in the over, and the two men who were well set have gone in quick succession. That's a bit of a batting crime, actually. Richard Stroh, it is getting to that stage of the game where you've got to put back to ball, but they've opened both ends up here. David Hunt, the new batsman, and Fran O'Neill will be on strike. They obviously crossed, that ball was up in the air a long time. Yeah, it's just what they needed, Bournemouth. Two quick wickets, and exactly right. The two men that have just got to the 50s are both out, so you've got two new batters at the crease going into the last three overs. I'd be happy with that, Bournemouth, but I think that... Fran O'Neill, he looks as though he, as I said before, he can hit the ball a long way. He won't be hanging back. Let's have a look at this catch, though. Look at that pink ball in the sky, black sky here at Derby. He gets around Young Watkins, and what a good catch just in front of the ground. Super catch. Fingertips, good bit of work. Fran O'Neill, David Hunt. It's Burgess Brown, Hind Rose, and Bostock. 50 off 45 and 53. Of 41, Stroh and Uliot, but they're back now. Can't do anything about this innings. Nice bowling from the grandstand end now, change of ends. It'll be tight, this will. Oh, the keeper's just fumbled it. Just at the last minute there, that would have been a real close call. Can you get back for two? This ball goes on for 1-3-7. Let's just have a look here. Did the keeper fumble this ball? Yeah, skiddy surface, he's bounced it once, twice, and if he'd have gathered it cleanly, he would have gone. Get up! This could be tied as well. Yeah. He's gone. Good thinking. Craig de Viermann, the captain, showing all his nous there, realised he didn't have to throw the ball. Held on to it, and the Cookney innings is falling apart at the end here. Yeah, it's a shame, that, because Fran O'Neill hit some great shots earlier on in the first semi-final run out there and he's a big fella I think once he got his momentum going down the wicket it was always going to take a bit of stopping to be honest it's the old saying go oh, got to turn in circle like the QE2 that's clever thinking that is the captain of arm and O'Neill goes he's run out for two sorry for, for one off two balls Adam Burgess is the new batsman Still wicketless, Mark House, but he's played his part there, tucking the batsman up. Likes to bring the ball back into the right-hander. Uliot and Stroh were just beginning to get the measure of him, but with two new batsmen at the crease, he's been brought back. And a drop catch this time. I was going to say he's put it straight down his throat. And Simon Ridley, who took a good catch earlier, he apologises to House. It's a straightforward. Well, it was straightforward, it's, he picked him out, out the middle of the bat, straight to him. Fortunately, though, the Bournemouth has put it down. It's a shame, because the standard of fielding throughout the day, I think, has been fantastic. We haven't seen many drop catches. That was one of the easier ones today, and should have been taken. Get on! 
just wonder really how many of these players have played under lights. It's a very black sky. The lights take effect around the ground. The pink ball just makes it that little bit more difficult. That's high. This is going to take some catching as well under the lights. Going to have to get there first and doesn't. David Payne, one of those that could have been a breathtaking slide along the surface on the dew. Upturn the hands and the ball land in it. Didn't want to know. They didn't want to know, did he? He pulled out of that, there's no doubt. Should have had a little dive there. But no, he's nearly hit him on the toe. So it might be just a bit more difficult to pick up than we think and give him a bit of credit to the field inside. You know, maybe the, uh, the pink ball is just uh, more difficult to pick up, perhaps. Well, it's all happening out there. I think the umpire might have just done Cookney out of a delivery there. Happens from time to time. Do anything about it at the end of the game if they lose by one. How frustrating would that be if you cook me, though? From a coaching perspective, John, you quite rightly say that it is tough to pick up there in the lights, but that catch, David Payne running in and the ball nearly landing on his toe, you'd much rather, from a coach's perspective, the lad takes it on and drops it and doesn't go for it at all, surely? Absolutely, yeah. For me, he's got to have a go at that. It's been in the air a long, long time, and as I say, the ball nearly hit him on the toes when it bounced. It wasn't as if it was uh, two or three yards in front of him and he had to really dive. It was, a, it was, you know, just a straightforward, if you get a dive in, you get your hands to it, and if they put it down, no issue. No issue whatsoever. Here we see it again, up underneath it. It was up a long time, and you know when it's gone straight up like that, you've got to get some ground to it, then you've got to steady yourself. Maybe he just lost it. It's the only thing I can think of playing county cricket for Gloucestershire. I don't think John Bracewell would have enjoyed that too much. Nicked. And that could go all the way. Yes, indeed. Four more runs. David Hunt with a nick. The wicketkeeper. Wicketkeeper batsman. Sometimes the best shot in the book at this stage of proceedings. Well, one thing about this, we've got a game on our hands. Couldn't be putting the total on the board again here. Anything over 150 is a great effort. All the games here in Pro 40 for Derbyshire against the county sides. Average score was around 150. And some good games. So hopefully we've got a good game here afterwards. Change of pace and a good scampering single. Adam Burgess reacting well to that. It's a change of pace that. Brave to bowl slower balls, but he's got a good slower ball. He's brave to bowl it and got away with it. Well, not get away with it. It's clever bowling. What am I talking about? Get away with it. It's clever bowling. We'll add some credit, John. Yes! A bit of swing and a big appeal. And that's got to be run out, surely. Kamikaze running between the wickets from Cookney. And they're in danger of wasting. Their earlier momentum that was given to them, courtesy of Stro, courtesy of Uliot, the lower order. Chris Ridley with the throw, off come the bails, and he's gone. Yeah, it's poor running, that is. There's plenty of time left. You know what I mean? There's eight balls here. I know you want to score every ball. I know, but you've got to keep your wickets going as well, keep your wickets in hand. How deep is the batting side for Cookley? That's the question. However, it's run out. A bit of work from Chris Ridley, that. We are seeing the low order. Only so five batsmen in the semi-final. Cookney didn't need too many. Posting a large 180 against Lockbrook. We're seeing the lower order now, courtesy of some fine Bournemouth fielding. It's good bowling. Straight, and if he misses, you hit. He's quite impressed with uh, Mr Payne. One ball left of his spell. Well, they've gone for 18 runs so far. One wicket to his name. Ball very well.
Good looking shot from Dan Brown. Be looking to come back for two, but I don't think he's going to take it on. Not six wickets down. Not the way the running's been in the last couple of overs. 48 for six. Could be looking for a big last over here. And 148 into 160, yeah. very competitive score. They've just stalled, haven't they, a little bit? Losing all those wickets in that big clump has just taken the momentum away here for Cookney. They've played really, really well, but they've just lost a clump of wickets there. And once you lost those wickets in that group, it was so difficult to keep the momentum going. The partnership there between Uliot and Stroh of 101. And when Uliot went, others have followed in quick succession, which backs up your point there, John. Got Dan Brown who's on one, Adam Burgess is on two. Got to get used to the lights, Gotta get used to the conditions out there. Not easy to come in and strike the ball under lights with one over to go straight away. Absolutely, how often does that happen? You know, you see somebody come in, they mess around, they can't quite get back, they waste deliveries, they end up wafting a lot of air around. And, you know, however, it's a competitive score again. This is anything around 150, as I say, you're in the game. Last over just about to start. And Ridley. It's a dot ball, and they're precious at this stage of the game. Yeah, and this is where I think the batsmen have got to be realistic. You could look to get bat on ball, and in fairness, Dan Brown did that. Scamper a single. Six singles at this stage might just be enough. Every run's crucial. Well, I said earlier, if you, if you can't hit a six, get a four. If you can't get a four, get a two. If you can't get a two, get a single. Make sure you score off every ball if you can. And it adds up at the end of the day. Exactly what we're talking about. Here we go again, and he's gone again. Dead eyed Dick, Chris Ridley. Get him down the 10 pin alley. He's plucked the lot out again. Yeah, he's very good at that, there's no doubt about it. Two strikes and you're out, as they say, but quality from the wicket keeper, Chris Ridley. Again, wafting air around, not bat on ball, no runs to the total. That's quality for the Brilliant stuff. Four balls left to go, they said him, and Adam Burgess, he goes for two, he's run out. Score, one, four, eight for seven. Nick Rose is the new batsman, he's going to be on strike, because that was the end to which Adam Burgess was heading. Right-handed batsman, age just 20. Job here, we just scamper whatever he can. Simon Ridley bowling and Chris Ridley dead eyed dick behind the stumps. And that's up in the air, and this could be out as well. Backpedaling and dropped him. And they're going to come back for two. House has put it down, and you would have had your house on him. Yes, bet your house on it. He doesn't drop it, House, but he has dropped it, House. Is that how it works? That's a dolly, that is. Should take that. Maybe it is difficult with this pink ball against that black sky, I don't know. They certainly seem to be struggling all of a sudden. It's clever bowling, slower ball, and here he goes again, Chris Ridley. You're not going to take him on, are you? Take him on at your peril. You take him on, you know he's going to hit the stumps nine times out of ten. I think I'm right. To, to Cookney have only scored here 15 runs in the last three overs. So their innings has just faltered, it's stalled. Disappointing from their point of view. They've lost these wickets in clumps. Yeah, contrast that to the semi-final where they scored 79 off the last six. Good looking shot. It's going to be the single. Well, I think Cookney will be quite happy. They've got 151 on the board. Still a lot of runs. They've got them. The pressure is on Bournemouth to chase those runs down. You have to say it's worth another few runs just to have those runs on the board. However, I think they'll be a little bit disappointed because they've just lost these wickets in this clumps and they've not got the score perhaps they might well have wanted here. Yeah, they could have batted them right out the game, couldn't they? But I agree with you. I'd rather have the runs on the board at this stage. So we're going to miss, and here they go again, Ridley. And he's missed. Proves he's human. Scamper through for a bye. They finish 152 for seven. It's a really decent effort. Richard Stroh very much to the fore again. Early impetus added by Tom Uliot. Then the innings rather fell away. They're the banana men from Bournemouth. 
be quite pleased with the way their side shows so much character and fought back. Absolutely, they've stayed in the game, haven't they, Bournemouth? Young team, they're up for the challenge. And I promise you now, I think we've got a cracking game of cricket on our hands for the break. Pretty pleased with their comeback there. Bournemouth, lots of high fives. Bowlers have done their work. They may yet be required with bat in hand. Got that kind of feel to it. 2020, small margins. Can't relax yet. Here's the batting card, the story of it. Richard Stroh, 95 in the semi final. He's made a 50 again here from 45 deliveries. Early fifth bang wallop from Will Elliott, 16 from 11. And then his brother chipped in, younger brother, 53 from 41. Probably the innings of the game so far. And then the run outs, look at them, three in a row. Devayman, Ridley and Ridley got rid of O'Neill, Hunt and Burgess. Brown with one and Rose with three. There's the bowling figures, standout figures there. It's the pain there, four overs, one for 19. At Denham, three for 39. Good economies, really. Only P. Smith there, one for 19 off just one over. Sorry, none for 19 off one over. Pretty good bowling overall, though. So we've got a game on our hands here. This is what Bournemouth need. They need 153 to win. 7.65 runs per over. Going to be a tall order, but I think Jeremy Coney's got one of the Bournemouth lads with him. Yes, I have. I've got David Payne with me. Yeah, tell us about the, the pink ball. There's a lot of talk about that. How do you find it? Uh, it's different to any ball I've used before, really. At the start, it will swing a lot. I suppose if you can keep your form, then it will keep going through that. It's smoke, but it comes off the bat a lot quicker as well. But otherwise, it's, it's just different seeing it, picking out of this sky as well. I haven't done much training using it out of the back sky. It's a lot different to a white ball coming out of it, judging coming out of the sky. But otherwise, it's just keeping your eye on it. It's quite tough picking where it's coming from. Yeah, there were a lot of catches dropped, really, and unusual for your side. I mean, has it been difficult to side here tonight? Yeah, definitely. As you say, we're usually very good fielding side, so for us to be dropping catches as well, then it doesn't seem right for us. But we've obviously given our best again. I've still, I'd back our batsmen to defend this total, so we'll be giving it our best. But obviously, it was just quite tough with the pink ball again. Yeah, how difficult do you think this target will be to chase down 150 yards? I think in the conditions it's in, it's obviously it's coming off service quite quick. It's quick outfield and catches, as you say, it's not, it's not going to be easy for them the same as us when it goes up in the air. So I think it's just as tough for them as it was for us out there. Enjoying Gloucester? Yeah, it's been really good so far. I've been really grateful with them to get the opportunities I've had. And I'm just enjoying every moment at the moment. All right, well, good luck tonight. Cheers, thank you very much. So there we are, there's uh, David Payne, the uh, young left-arm seamer who bowled pretty well today, had actually a huge LBW shout first ball, which could easily have been given. Uh, they have got to get these runs now, uh, Bournemouth. They need 153 to win the title. Just want to talk to Ian Harvey about this pink ball, because I think it's obviously one of the themes of the evening. The ECB very keen to trial the pink ball in this particular competition and just uh, see what it's like, uh, especially under lights and with uh, television here as well. And it is obviously difficult to judge it if you've not trained. Yeah, I think the big point is for us up here, it's quite easy to see. But for, for the players down there, I think the big thing for the players down there is they actually haven't done any training under lights, whether it's with a white ball or with a pink ball. And easy to pick up up here. But for the players, as we just heard David Payne there say, not easy to judge the difference. And then when it's up in the air, not easy to judge where the ball's going and pick it up. So... But also, I think that comes down to these players not playing under lights before. I think it's a, it's a new experience. And for, for that, I mean, we'd hear him say there that uh, they're usually a good fielding side. Well, they are, obviously. I mean, this is a good catch, but you can see that Watkins actually made a mess of judging that one and had to scramble in at uh, the last minute. It's very interesting that the Cutney side are out now, and guess what they're doing? They are practising taking high catches under the lights against this uh, sky. So the uh, coach has straight away got them out there. He knows it's likely to be an issue, and uh, he's uh, making sure that his boys are prepared as best they can in this very short turnaround. OK, so that is the situation. 153 is what uh, stand between Bournemouth and the Cup and a trip to Barbados, and they'll rather hope, Cutney, that they're catching slightly better than that practice. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we should be just about ready for the resumption.
Welcome back to Derby. The huddle is on. The Cutney boys know that they've got the runs on the board and the Bournemouth boys need 153 to win this title. The title that is up for grabs is that of Club 2020 Champions for 2009. Cutney have made 152 for seven in their 20. Can Bournemouth, the uh, youngest side in the competition with an average age of just 20, Bournemouth from the Southern Premier League, can they now do the job and finish it off and win the cup and get the all expenses trip paid to Barbados? Let's find out now as the players take to the field by joining, by joining John Morris and David Fulton in the commentary box. Thank you, Charles. The last innings of this Club 2020 tournament. 541 teams started it. We're down to the last two. Down to the last innings. Who's going to be the hero? Nick Park. There's a double hundred to his name in Minder County's cricket. The player with decent pedigree. He's going to be up against the man of these finals days so far. Richard Stroh. Kevin Peterson look alike. He's batted like him. I think he's got him covered with the ball. Drying the ball at this stage. There must be a bit of dew out there at the moment. He hasn't bowled a ball yet. Now the ball's got wet, but maybe he's just sweating up. Spin was a real feature of the first, well, both semi-finals. Played less of, a, less of a role in this last inning, so maybe it is getting a bit slippy. He slashed that away, Nick Park, and this could go all the way. Good bit of work, but he just tips it over the rope. It was a good effort. It was a good effort. He wasn't quite aware, I don't think, where the rope was. He was trying to flick it back and keep his keep the ball in play. So he went to try and pick it up, and he was up to momentum, was always going to take him over the rope. However, it's a good effort nonetheless. Have a look here. He tries to catch this in, bring it into his body instead of flicking it back. Never mind. Four off the first ball. All on here. A good competition this has been. A good run chase, I believe, this. And the leg side from Stroh and called wide. Four for first and in the wide. A bit of early pressure on the bowler. And if they'd done their homework, Cookney, they would have seen Nick Park score 40 odd runs in the first innings and capitalise on width. Rygate were very wide to him. He lashed a couple of cut shots over cover and past cover. Got a, got a bowl straight to him. Very much so for the same for Mark House, really, because he likes the third man area as well. So tight lines required here from Cookney. Just about there. Well, that's a jaffa. Absolute peach of a del delivery. It's just outside off stump, hit the seam, cut away like a fast leg break. Great delivery. Just look at that go. It's too hot for the keeper as well, David Hunt. He's done a lot. A couple more slips in, John. Well, if you're playing championship cricket, you'd have no hesitation, but in this format, well, you only had need two catches. That's all they've got at the minute, but they are absolutely hooping deliveries. Really cut away through the air, a little bit of swing, and then it pitched and seamed away massively. down the leg side again it's going to be a wide and this is the problem sometimes at this level why is Richard Stroh not playing at a higher level when you see him back like he has done and see those last two deliveries well that might might be your answer two good deliveries and then a couple down the leg side it's consistency you want isn't it unfortunately you overcompensate you've seen them great deliveries and has probably tried to bowl the magic ball there trying to you know pitch it leg stump and hit the top of off well it doesn't happen as soon as it starts to go down the leg side it continues to go Good single, a bit deep at extra cover. And scamper through easily enough. And as well as Nick Park's cut shot, one of the real features of the first semi-final was almost the tip and run that Bournemouth played. It was Harry carry stuff for a while, but they took on the Rygate fielders and they beat them. And I just wonder whether Cookney just learnt their lessons and have said, be aware how these guys run between the wickets. Get in tight, run them out. Yeah. Shot. Super shot, timing, absolutely top draw. Big gap through mid-wicket, handball hasn't swung, it's just angled in towards middle and leg, and he's just flicked the wrist through this, he punched it through the leg side. Super cricket shot. 
Mark House made 65 not out in the first semi-final. No doubt. A bit like Richard Stroh, who made 95 and then backed it up with a 50. Which is such confidence when you've already got runs on the big stage in front of the cameras. He's carried on from where he left off. It's a Perla. So we've seen a real contrast in the deliveries there from Richard Stroh. Three absolute belters, a couple of wides and a leg stump half volley. Yes, we had the full mixed bag there, didn't we? Some good cricket shots, there's a couple of jaffers. I tell you what, this boy Richard Stroh is up for this competition. He's just gone through an absolute jaffer there once again. Look at this, just pinches the seam through to the keeper. He doesn't have to do too much, just catch the outside edge. But look at that, the full commitment to his team. He's up for this fight. Important here for me is for Cookney. Got to start well. These first two or three overs, start well. No wides. Get it tight in on the ones. Try and cut off the boundaries. And if you can get that, keep the pressure on. William Butler went for 20 in his first over. Doesn't want to do that again. You can start well. Keep the pressure on the Bournemouth batters. We'll have a good game on our hands here. It's good fielding Great again. Great teamwork. Great teamwork. Great teamwork is the shout. Great teamwork it was. Will Butler just over pitching. Getting driven. Saved a couple of runs there. A couple of committed fielders. Always good to see two fielders running for the ball, helping each other out. Strong batting order. James Park, Simon Watkins, Greg the Vingerman, the captain. Short ball and pulled away. Didn't quite get all of it. It's just going to be the single. There's everything to play for on this game. This is it. This is the business end of the competition now, the last innings. Who's going to have the trophy in their hands at the end of this competition? Well, we'll know in about an hour or so's time. There's a lot of cricket to be played here. 18 overs to go still. All to play for. Tipped away. Tip and run style of Bournemouth get there quite comfortably. A lot of tension on the faces, isn't there? You saw by Richard Stroh there, looking very pumped up, very vocal, lots of hand clapping. Is that balance, isn't there, to be struck when you're out in the field? You want to be pumped up, but you've got to stay composed and relaxed so that the ball goes nicely into your hands. That was the major word for me there, you just said, relax. Try and stay relaxed, clear your mind. Stay positive with your cricket, but be relaxed about it, because the clear mind will come through at the end of the day. If you get emotionally attached to what's going on out there, Sometimes it's very difficult to focus on what's going on with the game. Yeah, you want just that right level of adrenaline, don't you? And relax, try and enjoy it. Great stage, showcasing your skills in front of a TV audience and a good crowd here. Bit of width. They've got a man back there, Will Butler bowling to his field. He sets the field and he's bowling to it as well. It can be nerve-wracking, and we've seen some nervy performances, particularly by the two teams who went out at the semi-final stage. You've got to love the big occasion, really enjoy it, thrive on it. Absolutely, that's what it's about. You know, the best players in the world love being on the best stage, so it's no different, I wouldn't have thought, for these players. Tuppish, he's gone down to third man. Will Butler started well here. 17 without loss. Bournemouth 17 without loss, they need a further 136 to win from 108 balls and the Coxspur Club 2020 will be theirs. Yeah. Leg side again there, Richard Stroke, just going to be the single. Press me Bournemouth, the way they ran in the first game not the ball in gaps and went straight away. They did put the pressure on, they did take some chances. They came out on top, started doing the same here. Every time, they're, they're ready to go all the time. If it's a bad ball, they look to put it away. If it's not a bad ball, they look for a single. Run away, but one leg by. Yeah, and they're also aware of conditions. You've got a greasy ball, they've been drying the ball, take the fielders on, they've got to scamper around, be sure they're footing, pick a slightly greasy ball up and whiz it in over the top of the stumps. Not easy skills at the best of times, under pressure. Put them under pressure. That's streaky. It's a good line of length from Richard Stroke. Get him out his ass in a bit. 
you need a bit of luck as well. You play all these great shots, but you need a bit of, bit of luck just to keep you in the game as well. So this inside edge here. Missed the stumps by quite a long way, to be fair. But another single to the total. Going along quite nicely. No alarms just yet. Only two boundaries in the first. 2.3 overs, and that's clever bowling. Richard Stowe, not seen that, I don't think, before, have we today? A slower ball from him. I don't remember seeing it before. Yeah, he's got a few tricks. Powerful with the bat. Swung the ball out. And it's like an off cutter. Slower ball. It just pinches the forefinger and the thumb together. It was a good length as well, the Yorker length. Couldn't do much with that. It's a good cricketer, Richard Stowe. I'm pleased for him today. He batted well and he's bowling well. Four singles off the first five balls of this over. And in the power play overs, it's decent work from your bowler. Nothing too wide. He sussed out that Park strong on the cut shot and he's come tight to him. You need to be around 50 for me, your power play overs. Somewhere around there, slightly above his fantastic position to be in to, to chase these runs down. You don't want to be too far behind. That was an interesting one. I must have a, a sniper or somebody on top of the grandstand who just shot the bail off. Is that all right, you? When we're 21 without loss after three. Yes, yeah, good start for Cookney. The pressure on them. Richard Strokes, probably two overs just for 14 runs. Something's going to have to start happening here, I think. You know, you just feel that little bit of pressure just beginning to build on these batters a little bit. Last two overs have only gone for, um, I think it's about 11 runs, 10 runs. Pressure just beginning maybe to tell a little bit. It's pretty straight, just worked across it. Yeah. That's what these teams are playing for. Club 2020 Cup. It's been won before by a Southern Premier League team, top of the kneeling two years ago. That's a beauty, and it's a big shout. He does like an extravagant appeal, David Hunt. It worked for him in the semi-final when he was a bit fortunate to get Matt Lineker out, and it hasn't worked on that occasion. Important moment. And he's jagged back, and I think there's quite a, quite a bit of a gap there, but it's a big appeal. Hard to tell. I don't know whether there's a noise or not. It's a super shot. It's a great riposte from the batsman. A big shout the ball before. And Mark House, who's in good touch, had an answer for the ball and nailed a cover drive to the boundary. Big wide half volley. Just got his hands beautifully through it. Strange grip, a bit of bottom hand in it. Struggled to get it through the offside with that grip, but controlled it well. This time he's on the pull. It's a bit of a long hop in truth from Will Butler and it got what it deserved. House pivoting on it, smashing consecutive boundaries. I got a feeling at the start of or the end of the last over that this over something was going to happen. Bournemouth have just upped the ante a little bit here. Two deliveries that needed hitting for four and have been put away with a plum from Mark House. and it's four more, three fours in succession. Could be just in danger of unravelling here. We saw this before with Butler, he went for 20 off the first over in the semi-final, bounced back well. This time it's his second over that's leaking runs. Yeah, it's a wide full toss, this one. Control not there at the moment for Butler. The boundaries on the bounce. No! 
Good comeback there. Butler. I'll run this time. 34 without loss over after four. Just wonder, John, whether that edge that wasn't given, if it was an edge, that appeal just seemed to unsettle the bowler. Sometimes the injustice of it. Let's have a little look here. Just looked like a bit of a deflection. I'm sure I heard something. Here we go. I think from Snicko, it could have been a cracking decision, to be fair. He heard something. No, I wasn't sure at the time. It didn't look to me quite right. The ball just seemed to jag back and just keep on its same line. Bit of luck here. It's all going Bournemouth's way at the moment. We'll get a couple for this. Park favouring the cut shot again. Dragging it down into the turf. Missing the stumps. Going over the keeper for a couple. Hundred and eight this pair put on in the semi-final. Got Bournemouth off to a flying start and Rygate never really recovered. They're on their way again. Bit of whip there from Richard Stoke Stroke. Come on, how close are we gonna get here, guys? Cup is there for us to win. Come on, boys. We gene each other up in that dugout. Who's going to stand up and be counted here? This is the pressure moments. 16 to win from 94 balls. Good game of cricket on our hands here. Looking for a quick single. Looks well run. It's got a great understanding, these two, and it's so important when you play this style of cricket, this tip and run cricket, that you trust each other. We've seen with England, haven't we? O.A. Shah, Ravi Bapara. One or two guys are low on confidence with their running. Take a, take a little leaf out of their book here. Absolutely. Park and house. I think it's been brilliant running between these two. It's, it's, they don't even have to call. They just give each other the look and they know they're coming. And that's when you've got trust in your partner, that you know that if he's looking at you, he wants that run. It's a great feeling when you've got that relationship with the batsman up the other end, when you just look and you know. It's almost like you've got psychic powers and one over on the opposition. And it's, it's instant as well. That's the thing about you build that rapport up with your partner. And you know that if he gives you that look, you, you can go for a single. And you trust him. It's what you want. It comes with a bit of time spent together, batting together at the crease. Good looking shot. You're looking for two. Taking it on. Always tricky when you're sliding on the greasy outfield to get yourself back up on your feet and get a base for a throwing position. Will Uliot did well as a decent fielder. Yeah, Ball's not had that extravagant movement these last couple of overs. You just feel that Bournemouth are just getting that momentum going with their innings here. Good over the last over. Butler went for four, but three boundaries. The singles are coming. The twos are coming. 40 without loss. Seven. 40 without loss. Need 153 for victory. Tapish. Just going to be the single. Interesting field they've got set here. Extra cover, deep extra cover. Really wide. Whereas normally you have him a lot squarer at point. And they've got that man in on the offside. The last over of the power play. Ran O'Neill in on the drive. One on the leg side as well. No slips. But bowling to that field at this moment in time. That's the man nearest to us, bottom right of screen. You're right, maybe because Butler's not that fast, 73 miles an hour. If he's had a bit of more pace, he's bowling back of length, you'd expect anything off the back foot to go squarer than that. Bowling to the field, as you say. Yeah. Vitally important here, he doesn't drag one down short and wide, because that area at point is now wide open. 
the boundary would be easy for them. Anything pitched up, if he's going to drive it down the ground, it is going to go to that white deep extra cover man now. It's interesting field placing. Good change of pace. We've seen that a little bit from Cookney here. Richard Stroh and Will Butler, both bowling a slower ball to good effect. Past the outside edge of Mark House. It's got to be a good bit of deception to do that because he's in good touch, this young man. 65 not out in the first semi final. 22 from 16 this time. Wait. It's picked out backward point. Good looking shot. Doesn't score from it. 44 without loss after six. This is the story of the power play overs. Yet again, Bournemouth opening pair. Good touch. House through the leg side, Park through the offside, and frustration for the bowlers. Yeah. Tried hard, Cookney. Maybe they'll get what they deserve a little bit later. But whenever they've strayed, they've been put to the fence. Yeah. Change of bowling. Dan Brown, left arm around the wicket. Spin, might not be a spinner. Left arm slow, but he knows what he's about. Well, you described him as Derek Underwood earlier. Might be a little bit too uh, too highly sort of acclaimed at this moment in time for this young man, but he bowled well in the first innings, there's no doubt about that. Is this the power lifter as well? Come on, Deep Z. Down. Good looking shot. It's going to be the one run. Yet again, that man on the deep cover field doing the job. When I said Derek Underwood, John, I meant the way he kind of runs up round the wicket. He's not a conventional slow left armour who totters in off two or three paces. Comes in, what a straight run up. A bit quicker through the air than you expect a left armour to be. That's where the comparison ends, I think. Hey, as I say, if he can turn out to be half as good as the great man, he'll be a very good cricketer. You, Bird? Well done. I played quite a few games against Derek Underwood when I was a young bloke coming into the Derbyshire team, and I've never seen spin like it, I must tell you. that dropped or did it not carry just by the look on Butler's face I think this might have gone down celebrate the dot is the key from the ever optimistic David Hunt behind the stumps celebrate the dot well, it's a great shout nonsense, isn't it? don't they there is some nonsense spoke many times on cricket grounds but I like that he's, he's, he's supporting his captain he's made a mistake he's dropped a catch but he's taken a positive out of it so good for him Yeah, it's better than you, Plonker. <laughs> Rodney. <laughs> so Derbyshire keepers in the past. Carl Cricken was very noisy behind the stumps. It's uppish, and he's got this behind square, and that was what we were talking about, the width, and that man in front of square is not going to cut it off. It's first boundary for a while. Nick Park, 23 off 21. First boundary since the fourth over. The 50's up. Even though they've not been hitting boundaries, the scoreboard has still been ticking. That's what I like about this Bournemouth team. Open the face there, Bacon sliced it off the side of the face of the bat. Got that spin going away from the fielders. Good shot. Whip this one away on the leg side. They're going to be scampering for two, although they're going to settle for one. Back up. Quick between the wickets, these two, but fielders equal to it. 51 for no loss. Bournemouth hot in pursuit here. 51 without loss. They need a further 102 runs to win. They take up commentary Ian Harvey and Charles Colby. Vital period of the game coming up now. Tom Mulliott, who bowled so well in the semi final, he bowled four overs, no maidens, four for 16 against Ockbrush, Ockbrook, and Borrowush. That's a uh, Chopped down, trouble at the bowler's end if there's a oh, runner. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Brother Will gets the ball to Tom, who can't collect, and he wants the ball bounced into him. Well, well, was that a run out chance which they could have capitalised on? Oh. Swept away, they'll be looking for two here. They come back quite comfortably for two. Yeah, the little half chances that you need to take. 
These two openers, Park and House, have got off to a good start. Back yourself here, tee back. This is a crucial point. Oh, now he's had another court and bowl chance that's just gone begging. These little half chances are coming and going now for Cookney, and Bournemouth are living dangerously. Yeah, I think this did carry. Batsman did well. He's getting out of the way. In the air, one bounce down to deep backward fine leg, or deep backward square leg, rather. Four off this over, two balls left. 98 needed from 74. At some stage, Bournemouth are going to have to hit some boundaries just to narrow the gap down to a, a runner ball. Is that a boundary? I think it probably is. Frantic chase. Well, that's a brilliant piece of fielding. Will Elliott saving his brother two. Yeah, fantastic fielding. This looked like a four all the way. I'm going to have a bit of a look at it, but I think he does brilliantly here. That's a fantastic fielding. As you said, Charles, saved his brother two runs. Run, run, run. Trouble here, trouble, trouble, trouble! Ow! And the keeper doesn't gather, and the keeper doesn't take the bales off, and Bournemouth survive again. Big Fran. Yeah, eight overs gone, 58 for none, Bournemouth. There's a few chances gone begging in that over. And for me, this should have been out. Might have needed the direct hit. But somehow or other, they scrambled seven off that over. There could have been a couple of wickets. 58 without loss after eight. It'll be a wide, interesting just... The uh, required rate is up to 7.83. The original rate was 7.65. So Bournemouth are basically going at what they need to be at. Yeah, you just like to get it down to around the runner ball, though. They've still got all their wickets remaining. This is the time. These two spinners were the ones during the semi-final that really put the squeeze on. Can they do it again? to get his line up uh, and Brown needs to get his line sorted out here ah! that's worth asking not out says I think we can say that Hughes are not out sir. Hugh Evans not interested in that LBW shout. Have a look at it. Get him on the inside. Keith is demented in his appealing. Not out, though. Well, well, well. Just a little concern. Bournemouth point of view, there seems to be a bit of indecision creeping into their running. It's been so good that always on commentary earlier were saying they thought there was almost something telepathic about the way they just kept running and going. Well, ever since they said that, there's been a lot of stopping and starting. Right there, there was a bit of stopping and starting. Yeah, it comes down to the pressure, doesn't it? We're talking about these two spinners who performed so well. Yeah, Brown already in this over. Bowled a couple of wides. Maybe just the pressure of the final. Maybe a week in Barbados is getting to them at the moment. They want it so badly. All the way. Don't think it'll be a boundary. Certainly should be two. And that'll be OK if it is, because that's the seven they need off the over. They need seven and a bit. If they get seven, they're pretty happy at this stage. They'll get the bit somewhere else. Still one ball to go as well. Yeah, just keep chipping away. The boundaries will come. If they can get a runner ball, and the odd boundary, it's all they need. 
run hard between the wicket. Twos and threes here and there. That run rate will come down. That's high in the air. This could be trouble. It's a chance. He's dropped it and he's taken it over for six, I think. Or has he chucked it back in? Well, when he's flat on his back and he's over the line, that's got to be a boundary, hasn't it? Let's have a look again. The umpires, I think, are going to check out and see what this happened here. It's in the air for a very long time. House gets the ball away. What happens? Holds the catch, drops the catch. Well, I'm afraid that's six. Yeah, that's six in my book. Well, we're still waiting for the umpires to actually decide what runs were scored there. They've signaled six. So that was a six. So 13 from the over it turned out to be a good one. The curse of the pink ball under the black sky strikes again. Yeah, we did see earlier in the day, in the two semi-finals, there was some excellent fielding, some great catching. But now, this final is really causing some problems under lights. Get a single there. Three balls of this over gone. Three, just the one run so far. No, this could be out. This should be out, and it is. It is a catch that is taken at last. Keeper takes it. Dave Hunt's the keeper. And uh, finally, House is out for the first time today. 65 not out in the semi, but he's gone for 34 and 27. Cutney have their first wicket. He's had a good day behind the stumps, David Hunt. This is no exception. It was tough. He wasn't sure about it under the lights as well. And his teammate charging him down as well. But a great catch. He wanted it. He had the gloves on. And Mark House is on his way for a good mate, 34, 72 for one. Well, 72 for one. They need 81 from 62. Still round about seven and an over. So we have James Park joining brother Nick. Bournemouth are in the hands of the Park boys. Good time here for Cookney to really put the screws on. A new batter at the crease. They tighten it up and try and bowl some dot balls. Get in there, front. Now, the running between the wicket between these two could be entertaining. They're brothers. Can you imagine the row there will be if one of them runs the other out? Come on, boys, keep going, Andy. Come on. The Patel boys made a complete hash of it, didn't they, up at Trent Bridge the other day? Yes, 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 yes. Great pick up. Yes, come on! They want two. And they're going to settle for two. They probably could have got a third if they'd been on their toes. So, three from the over and a wicket at 74 for one. At the halfway stage, ten overs gone. Nine runs per over needed. Into the last ten overs of the summer of 2009 here on Sky Sports, as far as cricket is concerned. Cutney or Bournemouth, where's your money? This is Dan Brown starting his third. And he's bowling! That swings it, I would suggest, Cutney's way. James Park out, first ball for Nort, coming down the wicket, he's yorked himself. The death rattle as the ball thumps in the middle stump. And that is the end of one of the parks. Yeah, James Park never really got him or gave himself a chance to get in and get used to the pace of the wicket under these lights. He's come down the wicket first ball. He's gone for naught. Bournemouth now in a little bit of trouble at 74 for two.
Not sure how James Park will be taking that piece of music as he trudges off forward to the right side of life. At the moment, it's a pretty dark and dismal affair. Out first ball for Nort on television. It's all he needs. Yeah, I'd be very disappointed once again. Dan Brown, the spinners are turning it around for the Cookney side. Simon Watkins is the new batsman. Another youngster at stage 20 years of age, the left-hander. Big job for him now to steady the ship again. So it's just reaped up eight, no, over eight and over this run rate. Got a lot of time to get himself set. Bags of pressure on. I do think. <laughs> I do think Kiva's talk a lot of rubbish. David Hunt is no exception. He's got the pressure of Bournemouth on his shoulders here. Come on, come on, tack, 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 tack. Don't do it, don't do it. Oh. Okay, okay. Right down, let's go. Position. I do think right that having runs on the board right in a situation position. like this is, is probably worth another 10, 15, almost 20 runs. The pressure of the scoreboard. Yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Runs on the board. You see that run rate creeping up all the time. away for four Nick Park relieves a bit of that pressure yeah a lot on his shoulders now isn't it Nick Park it's a good shot just losing his way here a bit again Dan Brown just drifting down the leg side slipped away right out of the middle of the bat that was the boundary they needed in this over and that's it that's the fact of the matter you need a four and then a few ones and a two if you can get them but a four and over will basically get you there or thereabouts yeah that's it try and get a runner ball there are going to be some dots thrown in there if you can try and get a boundary and over it'll make life a lot easier it's crept under eight again now Of this over so far, plus the wicket. Last ball coming up. Full toss, not a great delivery. Slogged away and slogged away for four. So that is a really good over now for the Bournemouth boys. They get nine off it, that last ball. Brian will be kicking himself. Three overs, one for 27, his figures. It is still game on. Yeah, a little bit of a freebie here for Nick Park. He moves on to 40. But once again, there's that boundary that they needed. Just drag that run rate down again. I think, Charles, for me, it's getting down to the nitty gritty. And whoever in this, out of these two teams can hold their nerve and handle the pressure a little bit better or come out on top this game. After 11 overs, Cockney was 75 for two, Bournemouth are 83 for two, so Bournemouth have their noses in front. If I had to ask you to put your money on one of these two sides at this stage, where are you going to go, Ian? I'm probably going to go runs on the board. I think runs on the board, as we just mentioned, and you, you mentioned, that probably adds another 10, 15, maybe even 20 runs. Once again, the fielding side still have to hold their nerve and bowl well. Oh, I bowled some, I bowled. Nine. Watkins single to start the over and does exactly the right thing he gets part the man on 40 on strike Park will be looking round the outfield wondering where his best option for a four is deep backward square leg deep straightish mid wicket cow shot corner really deep long on deep long off Sweeper square. Yep. Interesting to note that uh, Fran O'Neill, who spent most of the semi final camped out at deep mid wicket and deep square leg, we moved inside the circle now. Jack 
have a drive from Watkins. There ought to be two here. They're surely going to go. No, they're not. Well, that's a terrific result for Cutney. No, it is not the best running from the Bournemouth players. Nick Park, he feels he wants the strike, but for me, putting pressure on the field, he probably should have come back for two there. Pulled away. Should be cut off. They come back for two here, surely, won't they? Yes. You say that Park looks like he's just struggling between the wickets a little bit. He got a bit of an injury. Been in for 40 balls, Nick Park, for his 43, four fours. A wide, the single as well, helps proceedings. Come on, boys, keep going. Seven off the over with one ball to go. Still, Bournemouth are ticking along at what they need. 63, did, 63 needed from 49. Last ball, Watkins on strike. That'll be another wide. Uh, not what the Cookney side need at the moment. It's eight runs off the over, more than what they need, without even taking any risks or getting the boundary that they would have hoped for. Down! No run, no run. That's where they'll finish. Eight off the over. 91 for two after... 12. 62 needed for 48. Sure, the uh, runs on the board are a nice cushion as far as Cutney are concerned, but of course, as Bournemouth get ever closer and they have wickets in hand, then the pressure goes on to the bowlers. Bowl a bad ball, bowl a ball that goes in the air and the fielders don't catch it. Pressure goes on to them. I think this could be a really, really tight finish, a classic finish to our 2009 season outside. Could. You would, if you look back and you, you think about if it was a first-class game, you would expect a, a first-class side, the batting side, to win this game. But there's a lot riding on this game for these two sides. And lots of pressure. Who's going to stand up to it the best? Richard Bostock, 19 years old, comes into the attack. First ball, one down to deep, backwards, square leg. Two for, three for 20 in the semi-final. Richard Bostock. Delayed his trip to Australia to play in this game. Straight down the ground, there's a man out there though. He'll only get the single. Yeah, well fielded. Down in the deep there. To single off each of the first two deliveries. Take that, as long as they don't concede a boundary. Park on 44. Hey! Go again, boys, come on. Our Evans, not interested. Again, boys, it's a good dump. Missing leg stump. It's going to be the single. I have to say that I think Cutney look a very well, well drilled side in the field. They've got very cleverly set fields. There's obviously been a lot of thought goes into it. They know that the pace the bowlers are going to bowl at. They know where the bowlers are going to try and bowl the ball. Very straight, very full, saying if you want to drive us, we've got all of those boundary options covered. Yeah, it seems to me that they've got the fielders, they're quicker fielders and they're better fielders in the right positions. And we're seeing players running all over the park, left and right-hander, with the field changes. You can see fielders running from one side of the ground to the other, so they all know the positions, they've done their homework. Three in the ring on the offside, just one in the ring on the onside. Watkins on strike, facing Bostock, last ball of Bostock's over, wide, short, only going to be a single, though, so that's a very good over from Cutney. Only four singles from it. 13 overs gone, it's 95 for two. 
the target now is 58 from 42 balls. Yeah, that was an excellent over, just four runs from it. Exactly what they needed. Come on, Bagsy, come on, fellas. Power Look hitting. Out here. Come on. Away. There's Bournemouth team. A couple of boundaries. Elliot's about to start his fourth and final over. One for 18, his figures so far. High in the air. Has it got the legs to go all the way? It most certainly has. That's a great strike early on from Watkins, and if he's going to bat like that, Puckney have got a problem or two, and Bournemouth will romp home. What a strike. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot. And first ball, the over. So now the bowler's got to try and drag it back. Take five singles from here. It's 11 runs off the over, but I'm sure that Watkins isn't finished there. It's a fantastic strike. Great shot. Six off the first ball, all the pressure off. A single there, turned the strike over to Park. Seven off two balls. And it's a 51 from 40. Bournemouth are getting closer and closer to a runner ball. A couple of wickets have changed this game again, boys. Hey, come on. Original rate at the outset, 7.65. Required rate, 7.65. Yeah, it's smart batting this from these two. Got the boundary early in the Come over. On, now just working it around. Ideally, have another one here. But just going to wait for it to be in your area. Go chasing it. Gone again. Has it got the legs? He's gone again and he's got the legs and it's another six, another huge six. Yeah, what do I know? Don't go chasing it. He's come down the wicket through the line of the ball. Not, there hasn't been a lot of turn on offer today. The hit through the line, very clean strike of the ball, Watkins. It's another six for his team. And all the mid-on fielder can do is just watch that fly over his head. Hammered away off the back foot. One more ball is over down. to go. 15 We're runs from this pick. over. On, Park is on 46. All he has to do is just keep here, batting, boys. keep turning the strike over. Watkins has got the taste for it. 19 for 11, including those two sixes. Down, down. Come on, boys. Keep going. 14 Coming overs down. gone, 110 for two. Is that the pivotal over? Is that the over which has changed the game? The over in which uh, Tom Elliott, final over, went for two big six in sixes. Watkins, another off spinner. Knows what his opposite number's trying to do, and he splatted him straight down the ground. His spirit gets us through, boys. Hey, come on. 43 from 36. Right Bournemouth 110 for two at the same stage. Cutney win 95 for two. Wickets will change everything, of course. Well, now, is that a wide? It is, yes. Yeah, not what they needed at the start of the over. Fantastic over last one. I think you might be right. That might be the, the turning point. 15 from it. Wide from the first ball of this over. The pressure shifting back. Ah! Oh, that's got to be out, hasn't it? It is indeed. Not out of Hugh gives one today. That was plum. Umpire Evans did it with almost an apologetic air. He had to get his finger out there, and up it went, and on she goes. Yeah, change of pace at the back of the hand. Find himself a tad unlucky with that one, Charles. The only one he's given. Look at the ball. He's out for 19 from 12 balls. 111 for three. The smiles that were on Bournemouth's faces now just looking uh, a little less fixed. Yeah, we know what wickets can do in this game. Can slow the run rate down. But Nick Park's still there on 46. And the captain comes in. 
Craig de Weimar, the new batsman, the captain of uh, Bournemouth, one of the oldest members of the side, indeed the oldest member of the side at 27. He's their senior pro. Yeah, he's over the hill, isn't he, at 27? No, big job for him here, they need a captain's knock. Come on, boys, we're going, hey, come on! Really needs to play, get himself in for starters. Nelson I think Park might have to play a little bit of an aggressor here, just while his captain gets in. It's a, a much needed breakthrough for Cookney. Oh, this could be close, this ah! could be very close. Umpire says not out, doesn't even bother with the third. He's so convinced that Park is in. Too high the throw. Good decision by the umpire. Doesn't need the help of his uh, TV mate to sort that one out. Here you go, Bozzy. Chopped away, which is a good over now by Cutney. What have we got? Three runs from the over with three balls left. I just don't want to give away that boundary at the moment. Cool customer, isn't he? Richard Bostock, just 19 years old with all of these changes of pace and mix-up balls. He obviously studied you from birth with all his uh, variations in pace, Ian. Oh. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Good. Ball on a bit quicker than I am at the moment. Well, that's, that's a fairly shrewd assessment of the situation, because I thought your slower ball earlier this season was coming out quicker than your quicker ball. They're all slower these days, Charles. Excellent stuff by Bostock. This just turning things around. Three runs from that over. All of a sudden, the pressure's back on Bournemouth. They now need 40 from 31. And there's a, a look of tension in the air with the two batsmen out there in the middle. Still a ball to go, is there? Well, he's given it as a five ball over, he's missed the wide, wide off the first ball and he's missed it. But I seem to remember in the Cutney innings there was a five ball over as well. Just evened it up again, haven't they? Big five overs, come on! You can hear the keeper there, big five overs, this is what it comes down to for these two teams. Five overs of cricket, who can hold their nerve in the next five overs. We're getting an all expenses trip paid to Barbados. Still going with Cutney. Still going with runs on the board. I'm still looking at runs on the board, yeah, at the moment. New batsman in. I was nearly going to change my mind there. All the last two were going, but that wicket just swayed things again. A lot of pressure on Nick Park. Dan Brown is the new bowler, he's switched ends. Three overs, no maidens, one for 27. From the old scoreboard end, now he's switched to the grandstand end. They want a single. They've actually weighted that beautifully, but the captain not interested in two. Yeah, he did so well there, running the first one so hard, and I reckon if he had a got in and got out, I reckon he would have made it easily there. Come on, let's keep going. Yeah, keep single going. off the first Come ball. The rate right required has just popped Alvarez over eight on. runs per over. The pressure again, just popping back into Burma's half of the court. Come on, lads, let's go to our own game. Here. Yeah, Come the on. captain de Weimar now. He's faced three balls, yet to get off the mark. He needs to do it smartish. He needs to start contributing. Boundaries are what uh, would suit Bournemouth best. 
Get it, get it, yeah, yeah. Going to get a sink. No panic yet in this form of batting lineup. Won't go yet. Italian's fourth ball. He's got himself off the mark. Park on 48. He's really got to take it to these bowlers now. He's got to be the man who gets. He's the aggressor. Catch in the air, just Jack, wide. Attack, 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 attack. Cover. Buckle, both ends, Always interesting listening to uh, the keepers and their various lines of patter and what they like the best. It seems that uh, David Hunt is attack, attack, attack. He sounds oh, like something out of Second World War and a Japanese fighter pilot. Attack, attack, attack! Hold well on, Berger. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Well, let's keep going, hey, keep going. Come on, boys. Park up onto 49 and on strike. Yeah, this guy's on 49, you know. Four runs from the over, two balls left. Singles are not really good enough. They just need a boundary or two here, Bournemouth. They need to relieve the pressure. But they also need Park to keep batting. Oh, that'll be a wide, and it could well be five of them. Frantic chase here for uh, I, Will Elliott, and he just hauls it in. Three runs to the total. Still two balls left. Seven from the over. 33 from 26. Park still on 49. 49 from 48. Park to 50. Should get two here. Comes back comfortably. Still one ball to go, but what a good innings this has been by Nick Park. Very cool under pressure. He knows what's needed. 51 from 49. Cursory wave of the bat. He's not really interested in the fact he's got 50. He wants to be 70 odd, not out at the end. And a, a trophy in the bag on the way back down the motorways to Bournemouth. Heavily played off the back foot, rolls it up towards long on. So that 16 overs gone, 123 for three, 10 runs from that over and no boundaries. So that just goes to show Bournemouth are not going to panic at this stage. The highlights of the park innings, he's only hit four boundaries, four fours, no sixes. But he's uh, worked the ball around really well. It's 52 not out from 50 balls. He's got his side to within 30 of victory. They've only got 24 balls to get them off. It is going to be an absolutely classic finish for this 2020 game, this 2020 final for the two cricket clubs, Cutney and Bournemouth. We will have a change in the commentary box and here to take you home. But there's a breathless hush in the close tonight. It's John Morris and Jeremy Coney. Thank you, Charles. Great work, great work. Single, the first ball of the over, just parried away. Got a feeling there's still some little things to occur in this game yet. There's a little twist, I think, Jeremy, somewhere. Got a tie beyond the KO? You never know. Well, of course it is. <laughs> oh, toss, misses out. That's one way of backing up the throw. Yep. Use your shin. Shin it down. <laughs> like a hockey goalkeeper. That must have hurt that. Oh, pull on the shin. A leg by. Ooh. Oh, it's a laugh a cry. Yeah, that'd be good in the ice bath. Can't get it through. They haven't panicked on, at all, Bournemouth. Panic. There's been no sort of sign of a panic in these last four overs now. Still on eight and over. Just clips it away. Looks as if it'll go for four. Vital little four into 50 as well. He's played well here. Park. Super 50 for his team, kept his head. Great if he bats right the way through the innings for them, wins in the game. 
exactly one of this. Late cut, beautiful wrists. Full flow of the bat, watching the ball intently. In it comes and whip it away with the wrist. Lovely shot. Six from the over so far. Drags it down a little. Can't beat the man sweeping up there on the boundary. The last ball of the 17th over. Seven from it. 23 required. The bananas are getting concerned. I want to say to that, Jeremy. Concerned bananas. Yeah. Nothing like a worried or anxious banana. A little bit of width misses out. Is it wide? Yes, it is. It's not the last ball of the over. It's very harsh. Very harsh. One thing about the umpires, they have been consistent on wides all day. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. That line, just a guide, but you would have thought that with the stroke, the bat passed. Certainly passed the ball. Oh, caught and bowled chance, was it? Difficult one, or was it too high? Well, it's certainly a caught and bowled chance, but he's absolutely middled it down the ground. Two vital runs at this stage. 133 for three. 133 for three. Butler, the bowler, now coming back for his last. He's got three overs for 22. No wicket at the moment. You feel here, Jeremy, that you need a wicket. Cookney need a wicket here for me. Pressure's just coming into them a little bit. These lads have played really good cricket. The standard has been fantastic all day. The enthusiasm of every player out there. And why not? You know, it's a big showcase day. It's about these last few overs now. Parable scores after 17 overs. Cookney were 135 for four. Bournemouth 133 for three. Here's Butler. Just a little bit more pace on the ball. Might provide a few more options for the batsman to play in a wider sections of the park. They've been playing against Brown and Bostock and Ulliot, the spinners, the slower bowlers. They've struggled to get them away on occasions, but the slower yeah, bowlers haven't on, had as much going. say as they did in the first match. Absolutely, and I just wonder whether it's been harder to grip the ball, a bit of moisture in the air, a bit of dampness on the ground. Might not be quite as effective, those spinners, for that reason. They need a tight over here to cook me. You can get that tight over in, the pressure will come in for those last two overs. Massive over this for me now. Oh, he's got a nice little edge. I think he guided that deliberately to boundary. Slightly rueful look. But I think it was played deliberately. I think you're right. I think he's just got a little bit of, bit of width on it. And again, he's just opened the face for me. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe not, just a thin outside edge. Lucky, really, for the bowler. They all count at this stage. Interesting enough, it's brought an extra fielder in on the offside. They're trying to stop these singles. Yeah. Just eases it away to third man. And are they going to come back? Yes, they're coming back for two. The throw's coming in yeah. tight. Big appeal. They're going upstairs. Hugh Evans. Very grave-looking rectangle he draws in the air in the night air at Derby. Well, let's have a look at this throw here from Elliot. One bounce to the keeper's gloves. Oh, he's home. Or is he? Is the bat up? Has it bounced up? In, I think. In, I think. Yeah, I think you've got to say that's in. There, certainly, it's, it's tight. Interesting thing was that the keeper allowed the ball to pass the stumps and then they had to bring it back towards it. Sometimes that can cost you, cost you a precious little Absolutely, moment. and it's those little small margins that you get these run outs with, but for me, that's home. It's safe for me, yes, there's the green light, he's in. Great running, pressure's been on the run brilliantly Bournemouth from the outset. Look at those supporters there. Will in their team home now. Great to see, isn't it? What, yeah. a, what a climax of the season, brilliant stuff. Fine support for both sides. Oh, 
Butler again. Just homing in on that off stump. But boy, what a nice stroke. How well timed was that? Oh, well played, lad. Well, it is a brilliant shot. Well, I told you earlier on in the over, Cookley have changed their field here. They've brought the offside fielder up onto the on offside to save the singles. They haven't been able to save the singles, and they've also cost them a boundary here. This game's slipping away from Cookley here. Didn't hey, boy, have to bring that man up into the, into the offside. They had five men inside the circle then. He's putting him back now. The horse is bolted for me. Certainly looks like it at this stage. Nine from 14 balls. Pitch is dewed up a little, and it's just skidding on a bit. That ricochets off uh, cover. Just a single. I noticed it earlier on in the over when he put, brought that fielder up. I thought, that's a risk. It's an absolute risk, and he's given him that bit of width and a beautifully timed shot. Beats the fielder, it goes for four. For me now, Cookley, unfortunately, they've blown it. Oh, can they get a good over? Hey! Bold him. There's the wicket you're talking about, John Morris. Is it just a bit too late? Well, Butler it, strikes. It's a great shame because Nick Parker's played brilliantly. If you'd have seen his side home right the way through to the end, match-winning performance. But he's got out. Is there a twist? I said there might just well be. Just watch this. Just nips back off the seam through the gate. Just catches the off stump. Super bowling. <laughs> So Nick Park gone, Bold Butler for 58. And it's now 145 for four. It's Nick Park has played a super innings there. Absolutely brilliant stuff. But he'll be disappointed that he's not seen it home for his team. Vitally important, when you bat through your innings, you normally win the game. What he's done now, he's left that gap open and somebody else has to win the game for them now. Don't take anything away from that young man. That's a great innings and been brilliantly supported there by his teammates. As uh, Scott Mills hasn't batted yet today. Have they just created a little window of opportunity here? The Vayman is on strike, the captain. But, but does it mean that they've got an opportunity to bowl at the new man Mills just for a couple of deliveries and build up a bit more pressure? Go back to the Cookney innings, they lost a clump of wickets at this sort of stage. They were at 145, and they didn't get up very far enough till that 160 mark that would have probably won the game at this stage. They want eight to win from 12 balls. Another couple of wickets now, well, game back on again. But they need those couple of wickets for me. Here's Stroh back at the bowling crease, who opened the bowling. Drives hard, goes aerial over the top of mid-on. And it's four, a nice boundary. They're jumping, they're jumping at the uh, at the boundary. Well, they know that they've won this competition now. In their hearts of hearts, they know they've won it. And that's a great shot. Come in, knock it over London for one. One bounce for super shot. It's a shame actually for Cookney because they played some great cricket. But on the day, they've just not been quite good enough. They lost a clump of wickets when they were batting. Altogether, they didn't get up to the total that they thought they were going to get. 150 was a good score. Don't get me wrong. However. It wasn't going to be enough. Four to win now for this young Bournemouth team. Great stuff for them. Massively excited now on that bench. They can feel it. They can feel the suntan lotion coming out. A run. Great unity in the young team. They're all there together, look, they're excited. They can feel this winning margin getting closer and closer for them. Wonderful stuff. I've really enjoyed watching this cricket here today. I think it's been fantastic. Has been. Got to agree with you. Goes hard, goes aerial. Is this it? They're running away as it goes towards the boundary. A frantic dive. Can't save it. Can't save it. It's all over. The Coxburg Club Championship competition goes to Bournemouth, and rightly so. They've been at the game right from the first morning here. From the first ball that they bowled, they were at it, and it's been brilliant for them. Look at the jubilation. A young team, they, were, they were, weren't fancied at all, and they're so excited. They've won this competition, and rightly so. Win by six wickets.
for Bournemouth. And they are the second side from the Southern Premier League to win this competition in the three years it's been operating. The other was uh, in 2007, Tottenham and Ealing. Tottenham and Ealing, the winners. And this year, 2009, it is the gentleman from Bournemouth who once again claim the trophy. Played very well in the opening parts. That man, Stroh, played well for his side, very well for his side. Cookney worked hard with both bat and ball. He'll be disappointed, as will all his teammates. But a really good day here today at the Derby County Ground. Two of the young sides have got through to the final. And it's Bournemouth who'll be winging their way to Barbados. And there's the final stroke of this match that made just the difference despite the despairing dive from Butler. And then it's all to go and meet your mates. Captain the Vayman striking the winning runs. Support, various pieces of fruit. Stand in the aisles. And they go and greet those uh, supporters. They'll be able to have all sorts of pineapples, coconuts, everything once they get uh, on the plane. And did the job by restricting Cookney to 150, but here's the uh, the Bournemouth batting that got the side home. It was Nick Park, 58 up the top, with Mark House. Good running between the wickets, aggressive running between the wickets. Really worked nicely. The other Park brother didn't last long tonight. And then Watkins came in and got uh, 19, and then Devayman took it away. Cookney, the bowlers. Slow bowlers didn't quite have the impact they did uh, earlier. One for 37 for Brown, one for 33 Elliott, and one for 33 Bostock. And Stroh just uh, 3.3 overs. Got close, couldn't quite do it, Cookney. Well tried. Some uh, good cricket today from these uh, club players. Bournemouth, other winners here at the Coxspur 2020 final. By six wickets, with nine balls remaining. So terrific scenes here at Derby and what an end to our Sky Sports cricket season of 2009. I hope you've enjoyed it. It has been a, a terrific day today and I've got John Morris with me. Let's just talk about today and all congratulations to Bournemouth but mostly congratulations to Paul Bedford, to the ECB and to club cricket for putting on a show every good as bit as anything we've seen in the professional season. Could not agree more. I think today has been fantastic cricket. These lads should be proud of themselves, every one of them that's played in this competition. Because if it comes down to four games of cricket, or three games of cricket, sorry, that we've had today, you won't see better. I think it's been brilliant. OK, well, I think with a bit of luck we can uh, get back uh, down to where the players are because it's time for the presentation. We'll hear from both captains, we'll find out who the man of the match is, and Bournemouth will get the cup. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, Charles. Welcome to the presentation. Congratulations to everyone involved with the day, the four teams on show, and everyone who's put on a spectacle. It's been a truly great advert for the club game in this country. First thing I must do is bring up the losing captain, Will Butler from Cookney. <laughs> Will, bad luck. You played your hearts out, out there. How proud are you of your guys, are you? Oh, I said before the game, you know, so proud of the lads. Dug deep, you know, all through the tournament. And um, it's just a pity we had to go out this way, but all credit got to go to Bournemouth. Played very well. Um, Parky, great knock, mate. Uh, um, yeah, it's pretty tough to take, but the, we'll come back from this. Well, bad luck. All the best, Will, in the future. But uh, Nick, Will Butler, everybody. Can I, can I just say? Yes, just a few words. Sorry, can I just say um, thanks very much to everybody from Cookney who's come down. Um, great support from everybody and everybody watching, and uh, thanks very much. Will Butler. 
Now, what I must also do is just very briefly introduce the presentation party. We've got Paul Bedford of the ECB, who's the head of non-first class cricket. We've got Pauline Clark, the Coxpur UK brand manager, and Omar Khan, who's head of Coxpur PR. And the first thing I must do is bring up the man of the match, who is Nick Park, with his 58 from 45 balls. <laughs> who's going to receive a bottle of rum from Pauling. Grab your bottle, mate. Nick, what was the thought process when you went out there? Uh, well, we just tried to set a platform, to be honest. Um, we knew that we, if we set a good base, we could score 89 over in the last six overs because we've got a few big hitters in Simon Watkins, Scott Mills, and Craig DeWayman doesn't hit the shortest ball in the world. So it's been a great team effort all year. What does it mean to you having won this competition in front of the cameras and in front of some really good support? Oh, it's been great. I mean, thanks to Derbyshire for holding such a great day, Sky Sports, Coxburgh Rhyme. It's been an excellent day out. Um, it's been unbelievable. Nick, well done. Go and join the rest of your team. Nick Park, man of the match. <laughs> and last, but by no means least, let's bring up the winning captain from Bournemouth, Craig de Weimann. Craig, many congratulations. What's the atmosphere been like today? Oh, it's been absolutely electric. We've had uh, absolutely superb support all day long. I mean, it's a long way up from Bournemouth, and we've got a great crowd, and the guys up on the top of the balcony here have uh, sung our name all day, and we, uh, we're most appreciative of it. And now you're off to Barbados as well. Ten days, all expenses paid. Can't be bad as a club cricketer. Yeah, uh, pinch me. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. It's amazing. I, I can't believe it, really. I mean, we set, on our, set off on our journey a long time ago, and uh, here we are this evening, uh, picking up the cup and jetting off to Barbados. It's just uh, what dreams are made of. Many congratulations. Go and grab the trophy from Paul Bedford of the ECB. Many congratulations to the Bournemouth side to Craig de Weimann, to all these guys who have contributed today, to Mark House, Nick Park, all the boys. Go and join the rest of your team. And I'm sure they're going to celebrate long into the night. Bournemouth. Yeah, Bournemouth are the champions. Well done to them. It's been a terrific day's cricket here. John Morris with me. A, a final thought. I'll tell you what's impressed me about Bournemouth and that run chase. So cool, so calm. Absolutely. It was massive for me that Price batted through the innings. He got out right at the end, unfortunately, but he was composed. He stayed with his team right the way through, got them right to the edge, and he won them the game. Top stuff. And the other thing I liked was the fact that it was the youngsters that did it. This was the youngest side in the day, average age of 20. Captain there, 28. He's passed it in over the hill. He's the oldest boy in the side. But uh, what a terrific effort by uh, Bournemouth and uh, well done to them. So uh, there we are, that's it. That's uh, the 2009 season done here on Sky Sports. Thank you to John Morris and all the other commentators for being with me today. And thank you for being with us as well. I hope you've uh, enjoyed our annual look at club cricket in this country. And I think you'll agree it's in a pretty healthy state. Here at Derby, it's all about Bournemouth. Brexit. Bournemouth are champions. They're the Coxburg Club 2020 Cup winners. From us all here, goodbye. Sports news and views at skysports.com.